Right, so Keir Starmer, knowing he's heading into a general election, should right now, you would think, be devising policies to go into a manifesto. Should be coming up with all manner of attractive plans to salivate over, to grab our attention, to appeal to us. Notwithstanding the fact that most of us wouldn't trust him these days any further than we could throw him, no matter what he came up with. But instead of doing that, though, he's done the complete opposite. He appears to be hell-bent on binning absolutely everything he has ever previously posited in a bid to, as the mainstream media are putting it, bomb-proof his party's plans. Well, bomb-proof they will be if there is nothing to actually blow up. At this point, instead of using paper, he might as well write his manifesto on an etch sketch because it'll make it a darn sight easier to erase any plans he might make going forwards again. So what's he ditched and why is he ditching so many plans now when it seems completely counterintuitive? Well, it is counterintuitive and any of us in our right minds capable of original thought wouldn't be doing what he is. He's even more pointless now than he ever has been before. And his reason for doing all of this, his logic for ditching everything, is just so depressingly nuts and so very, very Keir Starmer. Right, so... Keir Starmer ditching anything and everything he has apparently ever believed in, is he, Damer? What? Again? I can hear you saying or thinking it with a good dollop of cynicism on top. Well, as things stand, Starmer is planning only limited reforms, apparently, in his first parliament on social care, the House of Lords and green investment. This is what we're apparently now being told. Every other area of policy, therefore, won't change from what the Tories are doing now, then. He's keeping their stuff. Banker's bonus cap, we've been told, isn't now getting scrapped, even though you've got Starmeroid politicians like Chris Bryant going on Sky News today and bleating about how there's no money left. Well, why leave the bankers keep even more of their precious bonuses and cream even more off the top when everything else is going to the dogs and when we literally own and print our own currency in this country and therefore can never go bankrupt and can never run out of it, the only bankruptcy that actually exists is amongst our politicians and the distinct lack of honesty and morality amongst so many of them. And if they would just tax the fucking rich instead of being in their pockets, they could fund stuff no problem. When there is a crazy and growing wealth divide in this country as a result of the wealthiest making even more wealth and being allowed to keep it, hoarding ever more wealth, this very wealthy elite produces, we have ended up with a poverty class. Not so much a working class anymore. Things are divided down even more these days. A poverty class at the very bottom who are poorer proportionally than the poorest people in a lot of other less wealthy countries than ours, like Poland and Estonia, for example. Instead of dealing with that reality, Starmer is going to leave them in poverty, it would appear. Bankers can keep their bonuses. Child benefit will remain capped, though, and the two-child benefit limit will stay. Austerity, in effect, will continue under Starmer, just as it has never really ended under the Tories. Rachel Reeves his wannabe Chancellor took advice on becoming Chancellor of the Exchequer from George Osborne, of all people. So perhaps this shouldn't be a big surprise. But it ought to nail on the fact that Labour now is no different to the Tories when they're taking advice from earlier iterations of that same party that has been ruining all our lives for the last 14 years. Aside from direct financial issues that we, can apparently, we apparently can't afford now, the same will go for council t cuts, leaving our local services on their backsides. And I suppose we can say the same of house building then, and taxation and security and defence and the NHS. All of it will just continue as the Tories leave it. What an absolute dearth of ambition. Even those things he is still committing to changing, the actual changes are up in the air. Starmer's green policies have been totally watered down into virtual nothingness, from a £28 billion plan to invest in green technology that has now been watered down into just an ambition to spend that much. Though he's keeping its commitment to achieving clean energy by 2030, now without any plan on actually how to achieve that. Social care was supposed to be getting a national care service akin to the NHS. That has now been scrapped. Starmer's social care plans now merely consist of some tinkering on fair pay agreements, recruitment and retention. And as for the House of Lords, well, I'm not sure what he plans to do with it now. The plan was to abolish it. And now Starmer won't even do that either. I literally have nothing more to add because there is absolutely nothing left to Starmer's plans for government. That's it. He is literally relying on people voting for him just to get the Tories out at this point and offering next to nothing in exchange for those votes. 
So this is going to be an insanely, intensively negative campaign once it gets going. We joked in 2017, those of us who were campaigning for a Labour government at that point, for a manifesto that consisted of two whole books, in effect, of a manifesto. One spelling out what we do in power and the other how it would be paid for. That the Tory manifesto at the time had been written on the back of a fag packet. How we laughed. Starmer's manifesto at this point wouldn't even take up that much space. But it is that sense of a very negative campaign to come that is the reasoning behind this, his depressingly hilarious reason behind him doing this. Because instead of committing to make this country better, make people's lives better and defending that in public, and why that needs to be done, especially in a very public arena like a TV debate, as we can expect to happen during the election campaign. Starmer is apparently so afraid of the Tories being mean to him that to bomb-proof his manifesto is to give them no ammunition to attack him with. He is that thin-skinned. He is that terrified of the Tories. He won't commit to policy changes because of them. He doesn't want them to attack him over such things. And he's bought into the old 30-year-old, apparently, Peter Mandelson political playbook that the left have nowhere else to go. Well, lots of options are opening up for people to take their vote elsewhere. Staying home will help Labour too. They're polling as it stands at this moment in time. They'll be factoring in that as well, especially Tory voters staying at home, so disgusted with their own party as they are. So for the rest of us, finding another candidate to coalesce around becomes even more important. But the thing is, it's a very short-sighted thing to do, I think, and doesn't, in my view, help Labour avoid being rinsed publicly by the Tories. Now, they will write a manifesto. It isn't legally binding. They never are. And we know the Tories regularly don't stick to their promises. Hardly news, that. But it will be full of stuff that they can point to and then point to Labour and ask, what will you do on this? To which the answer is going to be, oh, we're just going to carry on where you left off. But they won't be able to say that in public, would they? The Tories could demonstrate change. They could position themselves as the party for change. How perverse is that? They probably wouldn't keep doing it, obviously, but do it just to show up Labour for being so visionless, so cowardly and so pathetic under Starmer's control. I hesitate to say leadership because he is no leader. His hand is being held and guided down this road to nowhere and is utterly directionless as a result. Exposed publicly for having no answers for this side or the other and merely saying, we need to look at that, as he so often does now, will not go down well with the public, especially when he, as an individual, is widely disliked, despite his party's polling still remaining high nationally. It's high despite him, not because of him. But equally, you have to ask, well, what is Starmer going to do with a five-year term if he's promising so little going into it? You can imagine he's going to do a lot more once he's got in. His lack of substance is to prevent Tory attacks during the election campaign. But once over, and should he get into power with a majority, well, what would he do then? He can and will almost certainly do whatever he pleases without a mandate to do most of it. He won't have lied his way into power so much as deceived his way in. There's arrogance here, too. He doesn't think he needs to tell you what he'd do to get into power. That is incredibly dangerous. Politicians have to be held to account for what they promise. In his case, we'll probably end up holding him to account for stuff he's trying to do that he never mentioned previously. Of course, this news has been rinsed on social media, as you might expect. A chap called Nick wrote, why not just copy the Conservative manifesto? That way they really won't be able to get you. Well, it would save a lot of time and effort, wouldn't it? And if Labour are so determined to carry on where the Tories left off, they can probably rely on some Tories to support them in their own legislation, whatever that ends up being. Too late for us to do anything about it by then, of course. Podcasting is Praxis wrote, The point of governing really is just to put a different hat on the ruling class and make sure that some other people get cush jobs for a bit before they swap back which is exactly what we've had for the last 45 years. We really do need to do something different. And if you want a barbed comment on Twitter, then so often you need to look no further than the account known as Frank Owen's legendary paintbrush, who wrote, Every single pledge Starmer made in the 2020 leadership election was a lie, because he knew he'd lose if he told the truth. Starmer is unfit to be a double glazing salesman, let alone PM. If he were a double glazing salesman, he'd sell you windows with no glass in them. Which really does hit the nail on the head. There's no way of knowing what this lying charlatan will do in power, because he will never tell us before he gets there. But what we do know is he's too afraid of the Tories, and therefore too afraid of us to make it public. And that should make us very nervous about voting for him. He's making his own supporters nervous too, though. One of Starmer's biggest cheerleaders in the media has been The Guardian's John Rental. Yet 
He put out a tweet the other day following Starmer's speech to business leaders earlier this week, mocking part of Starmer's speech, saying there is something fundamentally broken in the way this country produces wealth. Such garbage from Starmer. Well, of course it's garbage. We know how much wealth is made. It's wealth redistribution that is broken in this country. But if Starmer is losing the likes of an old Blairite like Rental, he's got problems from the media brewing. It would be a lot worse for him than the Tories chipping at him. And Rental wasn't alone in picking on him either. Another surprise critic this week has been Tony Blair's old advisor, John McTurnan, who penned a piece in The Guardian as well. It is the centrist go-to rag, after all, called Labour has one big spending plan and it is making a hash of it where he criticises the green policy now being watered down to practically nothing. He said if Labour doesn't stand for change, what does it stand for? And the answer to that is very easy, really, since it is the same thing Blair stood for, carrying on where the Tories leave off. Of course, if one thing is to find Starmer's leadership in power, it is being wrong-footed by the Tories. And following in their lead, and even on the matter of recognising a Palestinian state, he's been wrong-footed by the Tories, despite it having been Labour policy for the last decade. He is useless. Find out the detail of that story by watching this video next, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.